done the beginner's flexibility stretching program and want to take it on a stage further, stay tuned. Hello healthy people, I'm Richard and welcome back to Exercise for Health and in today's video I'm going to take you through another flexibility routine that's a slight progression from the first one that I did for beginners. If you're new to this channel we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity so go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon so you're notified of when we upload a new video. So in the beginners video on flexibility we did stretches in a passive relaxed manner where you got your body into a position to feel the muscles being stretched and then held it there for a certain time before either increasing the stretch further or moving on to another one. The routine in today's video, however, will involve holding active stretching positions. This means that while you're stretching, some muscles will be activated or contracting. The method we're using is called contract relax and we will be stretching a muscle by contracting the opposite muscle using a process known as reciprocal inhibition. This basically means if I contract my bicep muscle, which is the agonist in this case, then by reciprocal inhibition, the opposite muscle, the antagonist, in this case the triceps, has to switch off and relax to allow for the movement. This is a great way not only to allow for a faster increase in flexibility gains, but also allows for an increase in strength of the opposing muscles that are working. Using this method, you won't get into a deep stretch, so you won't feel it as much as you did with the passive stretching, and you may feel it more in the muscles that are being contracted but you are training the muscles to be able to switch off their tension, therefore allowing for improved flexibility day to day and creating a better balance to the body. Because the contraction of the opposing muscle is performed isometrically or statically, it's probably not wise to perform this type of stretching if you have high blood pressure or a heart condition. And you should try the beginner's flexibility routine by tapping the pop-out banner above. Now for each stretch I'm going to focus on the muscle groups that tend to get tight through lack of physical activity, which potentially then can lead to other problems such as back pain. To do the stretches safely and effectively, once you've adopted the position where you begin to feel the stretch, I will then get you to contract the opposite muscles for about 6 to 10 seconds. The first two seconds of the contraction should be gradually building the intensity of the actual tension and then you continue the contraction for further four to eight seconds before relaxing. And we'll repeat this contract relax process a further two times, but it's important to make sure that you're breathing during that six to 10 second contraction. It's quite easy to hold your breath and then your face starts to go purple. Right, now I've explained the science, let's go through the stretches. Right, the first stretch we're gonna do is to stretch the muscles on the upper part of the back, so the trapezius and the rhomboids, all those muscles on the top of the back between the shoulder blades. To allow those to stretch, we need to contract the opposite muscle groups. So in this case, it's gonna be contracting the muscles on the chest and the front of the shoulders. So to do this, I want you to lift your elbows up so they're slightly lower than shoulder height. And I want you to think about trying to draw the elbows forwards and also trying to squeeze the elbows together at the same time. So as you contract those muscles in that sense, what that'll do is it will then relax the muscle on the top of the back and allow them to stretch further around. So we'll hold, this, hold the actual contraction and the stretch for about six to 10 seconds, we'll relax, then we'll go again, relax, and then we'll do it a third time. Okay, so adopt your position. So in a seated position, wherever you feel comfortable, draw those elbows forwards and try and get those elbows in as well. And then we'll hold that contraction. So keep breathing with it. We'll hold that contraction for about six to 10 seconds. And relax. Okay, and then they're gonna go into it a second time. So draw the elbows in and forwards, like trying to rip your t-shirt off your back like the Incredible Hulk. And relax. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time. So squeeze the elbows in and forwards, hold that contraction, keep breathing with it. Good, and relax. Right, the second one we're gonna do is we're now gonna stretch those muscles across the chest which means we have to contract the muscles up on the top of the back, so it's the opposite of the first one we did. So you can do this in one of two ways. You can either do this one in a seated position, where you're gonna take your arms out to the side, arms pretty much straight, palms facing forwards, and then you just squeeze the shoulder blades back together, so it's pulling the arms backwards, <clears throat> so it generates that stretch across the chest and the front of the shoulders. 
The issue with doing it like this is you're constantly then using the shoulder muscles to keep your arms up against gravity, because obviously gravity is trying to pull your arms back down again. So it does make it a little bit harder on the shoulders. So to make this one slightly easier, you can do it in a lion position. So I'm gonna use the stability ball that I've got here, but you, if you're in the gym environment, you could do this like lying on a bench or anything that's relatively slim that you can get your arms down either side of it would be fine. So I'm gonna to go to a lion position over the top of the ball. So that I've got the ball now underneath my shoulder blades. I'm gonna take my arms out straight. So now gravity is allowing to I can use it for my advantage because it's allowing the stretch to go even further. So I'm going to let the arms go out to the side. So I'm starting to feel a little bit of a stretch anyway, but I'm going to contract those muscles on the top of the back to force the arms down towards the floor. That's going to increase the stretch. And then as I relax, the arms will pop up again just a little bit. And then I'll do a second contraction, a third one. So if you adopt the position that you feel you want to do, whether it's seated or in a line position, Get that position ready so you feel like you're starting to stretch and then contract those muscles. Squeeze those shoulder blades back together so you feel that stretch across the front and then relax. And then we'll do it a second time. So remember to keep breathing with it. So squeeze those shoulder blades back together, force those arms back and relax. And we'll do one more. So go for the final contraction. So squeeze those shoulder blades back together. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Get that stretch across the front of the chest and the shoulders. And relax. Good, well done. Let's go on to the next one. Right, for this next one, we're gonna stretch the muscles on the side of the back, the latissimus dorsi muscles. And for this one, we're gonna to have to contract the muscles on the shoulders. Now I'm going to show you one version that's using this mop that I've got, but you could also use like a broom handle or like a curtain rail or anything like that to be able to use. Um, and the difficulty with this one is you're going to be kneeling on the floor, the head's going to be on the floor, and the idea is you're trying to lift the actual arms up away from the floor. But this one's quite difficult if your mobility, like me, is not particularly good in the shoulders. I'll try and demonstrate it. I'm going to show you an easier version, which is going to be uh, led down like we did on the last one where I'm going to use my stability ball. So again, you could use this on a, on a bench. So for this one, if you find it quite hard, uh, take your hands wider and that make it a little bit easier to get some movement in it. And obviously you're going to be trying to lift it against gravity. So the opposite muscles are going to have a real good workout to try and even engage a stretch on the side of the back. So I'm going to go down onto the floor. So the head's on the floor, arms out straight. And then from there, I'm going to try and lift up for about six to 10 seconds and then relax. Okay, so it's just trying to get that movement where we're trying to lift the actual uh, handle or whatever you've got just away from the floor, even if it's for a couple of inches, six to 10 second hold and then relax and then repeat that three times. I find that one particularly hard, so I'm going to show you a slightly easier one. Which is using going into a lying position like we did on the last one. So from here, I'm gonna adopt the same position as we did for the chest one, but this time I'm gonna take my arms back behind me this way. So gravity is again helping me on this one because then it's trying to pull my arms down to generate more of a stretch. So I'm gonna try and lift the shoulders up to the ears, and then from there, I'm gonna force my hands down towards the floor, but trying to keep the arms straight. So I don't wanna do this, I want to make sure my arms are staying straight and I'm forcing them down towards the floor so I can feel the stretch on the side of the back. So we're going to hold that contraction for six seconds and then relax and we'll repeat that three times. So when you get into your position, so you're going to contract, force the arms down towards the floor, keep breathing with it, and then relax. Then we'll do it a second time. So force the arms down towards the floor. and relax, then we'll do a third one. So contract, keep breathing with it, force those arms down, keep them straight at the elbows, and relax. Good, let's go on to the next one. Right, so for this one then, we're gonna be stretching the muscles around the front of the shoulder, which means we're gonna use the lat muscles on the side of the back to contract to allow the shoulders to stretch. So this time we're gonna be taking our arms behind us this way with the arms straight. So that's really the opposite of the one we did on the last one. So I'm gonna use the broom handle again, or in this case my mop handle, and I'm gonna take it behind me. 
and you want to try and keep your hands relatively close together. You don't have to make them touch, but you don't want them out too wide for this one, otherwise you'll probably find that you can lift up quite high anyway. So have your hands a bit wider than the shoulder's width, palms facing up towards the ceiling. And then as you sit yourself up tall, keep your arms straight, and then the movement's going to be trying to lift the handle up towards the ceiling. There's your contraction of the lap muscles, which is now engaging a stretch on the front of the shoulder. And then you can relax, and we'll do that three times. Now, again, this is a slightly harder version because you're working against gravity. So if you want an easier version, which is what I'm going to do, is we're going to go to a lion position, like we've done on the last two. So now I've got gravity acting on my arm to allow the arm to drop down towards the floor. So from here again, this would be probably better actually on a bench because that way you won't have the sides of the stability ball getting in the way. Um, but I'm going to keep my arms straight and I'm going to try and force my hands down and back towards the floor to create the stretch on the front of the shoulder. So when you're ready, adopt your position and contract. So you're going to force those arms back. If you're in a lying position, push them down and back towards the floor and relax. Then we'll go for a second contraction, so contract, keep those arms straight, force them back. So using the lap muscles to try and pull those arms back and relax. And then we'll do one more, so contract, force them back behind you as far as you can. If you've got the handle, think about lifting up behind you but without leaning forwards. And relax. Good, so that was one for the shoulders. Let's go on to the lower body now. Right, come down to the floor now for the last three that we're gonna do for the muscles and the, around the legs and the hips. So what I want you to do for this one is we're gonna do a hamstring stretch, the muscles down the back of the leg here. What I want you to do is straighten out one leg, just keep that one relaxed. With the other one, you're gonna grab hold of the back of the leg where the hamstring is and just try and draw the knee back towards you but without lifting your bottom off the floor. And then we're going to contract the quadricep muscles, that's these muscles on the front of the thighs, which are the opposite to the hamstrings. So we're going to contract these to stretch these. So we're going to hold the contraction. You can see my legs starting to shake a little bit, where I'm trying to contract it and work against the hamstring. So the hamstring will have to switch off and relax, but you'll tend to feel the stretch quite quickly on this one. Hold the contraction, six to ten seconds, and we'll do that three times. So get yourself in a line position, grab hold of the back of the thigh with your hands, bring the knee up towards you, that lifting your hips or your bottom off the floor. And then think about now using these quad muscles to try and straighten the knee. So see how straight you can get the knee, feel the stretch or hold that contraction. Keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing. And relax. And then we'll go again. So contract the quads, try and straighten the knee. Keep breathing with it. And relax. Now, if you find that's getting easier, see if you can lift your knee up a bit higher, closer to your chest. So that third time, see if you can straighten the knee. Keep contracting, contracting those quad muscles, feel the stretch on the hamstring. And relax. Good, let's swap over now and do the same on the opposite side. So start off with, grab hold of the back of the leg. Bring the knee up towards the chest without lifting the bottom off the floor and then go to try and straighten that knee. So work those quads to see if you can get the knee to go straight. Hold that contraction, keep breathing with it, just for a few seconds and relax. And let's go again, so contract, see if you can get the knee to straighten. And relax. Again, if that's getting easier, just bring the knee a bit closer to you. For the third one, so contract, See if you can get that knee to go straight. And relax. Good, let's go on to the next one. Right, for the next one then that we're gonna do on the floor, we're gonna stretch the muscles called the adductors. That's the muscles on the inside of the thighs. So the opposite muscles that we're gonna work are the abductors. So the glute medius muscle, uh, tensor fascia latter, the muscles on the outside of the hips. So for this one, we're going to go into a, what we call butterfly stretch, which is where you bring the soles of your feet together and you get the heels of your feet as close as you can to your bottom. So if you need to, with the hands behind, I can just push my bottom a bit closer to the heels of my feet. And then from there, I'm going to think about trying to force the knees down towards the floor. So as I contract the muscles around the outside of the hips, that's going to drop the knees down, which is then going to activate a stretch on the inside of the thigh. So adopt your position. Get ready to contract. Ready, go. So force the knees down towards the floor. 
That should create a little bit of a stretch on that inner thigh. Keep breathing with it. And relax. And then we'll go again. So contract, force the knees down towards the floor. Keep breathing. Just six to 10 seconds. And relax. We'll do one more. So contract, force the knees down. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Good, and relax. Brilliant. All right, let's go on to the last one. Right, for this last stretch, we're going to stretch out the muscles called the hip flexors, and that's the muscles here on the front of the hip. So the opposite muscles that we need to contract for those are the glute muscles, so the muscles around your bottom, basically. So for this, we're going to go into a really long lunge position. Now, particularly put the, if you're on a harder floor, it's probably a good idea to put a cushion down on the floor for you to rest your knee on so it's a little bit more comfortable. And I'm going to take the other foot further forward so the knee's directly over the ankle at that point. So you can see already this is starting to open up the front of this hip with the knee on the floor. Now to contract the muscles around the glutes, effectively it won't look like much, but what, what you're trying to do is think about trying to lift the knee up off the floor but without pushing through the front foot so you're not trying to actually take your body up off the floor you're just trying to open up this hip to go further back so we want to get this knee to go back and up a little bit so it's going to open up that hip a little bit more without me popping up so from there it will look something like that so it doesn't really you won't see very much but there might be a very slight movement in the knee starting to lift up off the cushion or off the floor so you can contract these muscles around the glutes and get more of a stretch around the hip. So we're gonna do this three contractions and then what we'll do is we'll swap over and we'll do the same on the opposite side. So get yourself into the position. Make sure you feel the stretch a little bit on the front of the hip first. And then from there, we're gonna contract. So we're gonna try and lift that knee up and back away from the floor, but without trying to lift the body off the floor. So ready, go, contract. Keep breathing with it. Relax. Good, we'll go again. So contract. Think about trying to pull the leg further back. Feel this muscle, tighten up this glute muscle here. Relax. We're gonna do one more. So contract. And relax. Good, well done. Let's swap over. Do the same on the opposite side. So again, I'd probably suggest if you're on the half floor using the cushion. So, long lunge position. Make sure you allow the hips to go forwards so you can feel the stretch on that hip flexor first. Hold on to something if you want to and get ready to contract. Ready, go. So contract, think about trying to slide that knee further back and lifting it off the floor just about a few millimeters and relax. And we'll go again. So contract those glute muscles, trying to fire up those muscles around the bottom to try and tighten up and relax, good, last time, contract, and relax, good, well done. I hope you enjoyed that flexibility routine today, if you did, please give it a thumbs up below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from these exercises. I do have an advanced flexibility video in the pipeline, so look out for that one soon. Otherwise, stay active, keep moving, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.